Hello again, it's Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength, talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Aaron Evernham and Steve Post here, have a great show for you. Aaron, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Did a little Monster Mile, did some of the beloved Dirt Modifieds at Georgetown on Friday night, so got nice. a little dirt in my beer, if you will. Um, you were out. You were out being a horse pageant mom. Yes, I am now a pony mom. A pony that's, mom. That's oh, the that's term. what they're called. Pony, pony mom. mom. Yes. Ah, yep. soccer mom, pageant mom. You're a pony mom. Yep, yep. Kate had her first competition, and it was it was pretty amazing, actually. That's cool. Yeah. Probably a lot of parallels between that and and and, and racing and yeah, you know, like quarter midget there racing are, and things like that. There are like you know, I, I was talking to my brother on Friday night. He's got his daughter racing up at Stafford right now yeah, on the yeah. Monday night outlaw right. carts and. Uh, he said the same thing. I said, we're getting ready to leave for the weekend. And he was like, well, it's kind of the same premise. You go with the family for a weekend. You do the whole thing. However, the food at the horse competition is much improved since my quarter Ah, days. there we go. Yes. I mean, they don't mess around. There's That's a right. Japanese restaurant, Italian steak, Mexican, all in this one facility. Really? I mean, all good. I could get used to the food's a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Than the, than the yeah, we, our short tracks track. might need to step it up. Short tracks need to step it up. <laughs> some have. Some have. But um, still need to go However, a bit also. It's just as, or if not more expensive, possibly, than quarter minutes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, absolutely. What a weekend of sprint car racing. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah. Let's get to our Hefner Racing Products hot topics. Um, the world of outlaws versus the posse. All the speculation, all of the talk, all the banter. And yes, I know the scorecard reads three to zero. And yes. that's ultimately what matters. What's interesting is that if you look at towards 2020, the posse was shut out last year with the outlaws, with Kyle Larson in the mix, and with COVID. So, Posse needs to step up their game. Uh, The outlaws won it all with uh, Brad Sweet, Carson Macedo, and Aaron Reitzel. But I think if you're sitting there at Pennsylvania Posse, you're thinking, and nobody likes what ifs, but you're thinking, I I think stepping up their game is a small step to win some races when they roll back in there. total blowout. No, it wasn't. I think last year... It was more of a blowout. Yeah. I think this year, I think when you look at Brent Marks, when you look at Lance DeWeese and Anthony Macri, yep. I think those three, and you just know Danny Dietrich and Freddie Raymer, by the time July rolls around and everyone rolls back in there, are going to be have better. D- Danny, Danny's been good. He just had a bad weekend. Yeah. Freddie is Freddie always sneaks up on this thing, mm-hmm. and uh, by July, Freddie, uh, I just think that the, the posse needs to step up, but yeah. not a lot. Marks. Yeah. That's just insane. I mean, that run at, at Lincoln, Lincoln was that was the craziest thing in the world. I mean, and and from twelfth to the lead to fourth to second, and and getting ready to blow by Brad Sweet. Now, just fathom blow yeah, by after Brad nine Sweet. wins or eight wins he would had at that point. How, I mean, Brent Marks, this, this is the most, one of the most fascinating stories on the tour. He's got some serious speed. Yes, he does. Man, I'll tell you what, he's got some speed. And, and I, even saw, I even saw one of the nights at, at Lincoln or at Williams Grove, he qualified mid-pack, yeah. which, is, which is a step in the right direction. Cause, and we've talked to Brent about it. He's won like more hard yeah. charger awards than anybody on the planet. That's neat, but it's not what you're looking for. No. Um, boy, has he got speed. And uh, and I just saw he posted uh, he's going to run Bridgeport tonight, and then he's staying with the Outlaws doing um, uh, Attica and uh, Sharon, Sharon this weekend. So uh, going to see if we can keep that mm-hmm. Outlaw speed up. Um, wouldn't be surprised if he don't win. Well, and it's neat for him now. I mean, I, I know it wasn't the ideal situation, but there are no points. You're not running for, in no. Pennsylvania. You're not running All-Stars. You, you really no. can do a true Outlaw. Right, and then I'll be interested to see next week. Uh, I'm assuming he might be at the Wiker. Yeah. Because there's $26,000. Oh, I would guess Royal, he's going to be there. He's, he gets around that joint really, really yeah. good. He gets close to that wall. Boy, he does. Whew. He does. The only thing, I'll tell you, the guy that's going to go to port after we talked to him last year, the guy that's going to go to port with a lot less, lot less stress is Barry Jackson, <laughs> who was uh, Brent's crew chief over yeah. there. Um, Barry just says, whoa, man, that just takes your breath away when you see him do that. Oh. Uh, um, it's, it's neat. It really is. So Posse, um, gets, uh, uh, over three again, uh, outlaws. We've talked about this. They are just so, so mm-hmm. good. And we're going to talk to Aaron Reitzel later in the program. And, and, and I kind of want to pick his brain about how good the intensity level across the board and, and, and how good he has to be every night. And I think that's the thing. And 
boy, I'm telling you what, his heat race on Saturday night, holy mackerel, from fourth to the lead yeah, into turn one. That was cool. That, that was, was just it that was, was really serious. And and this was after one got called back where he went fourth to second. Yeah, because he called it back. The caution came out. Yeah. And Johnny said something about, oh, Aaron Reitzel's going to hate this. You no, know, hold my beer. I hate it because I'll I was better. second. I'll do better, and he did. So, um, and, uh, and 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 not to be outdone out on the West Coast. How about Dominic Selzy? Chewy, man! Friday night, Colorado Speedway, King of Thunder four tens winner, Sprint Car Challenge Tour three sixties winner. Saturday night, Thunderbolt Raceway, the Peter Murphy Classic, Tulare, King of the West, Narc four tens winner, King of the Thunder three sixties winner. Four for four. Dominic's going to join us on our television program this week. Normally, we'd have him on today's show, but we have him on our TV show. He's so big, he's a TV star. Uh, obviously. Um, so, I liked his picture with all the trophies and the broom. Yeah, and the broom. Remember, because someone someone earlier this year said he, he uh, at his father's business, he should be uh, just cleaning out the restaurants or something to that effect. This was before the whole taco truck took over. So I mean, but at one point this year, we said he's he's barely good enough. Someone said something about the effect that he should only be cleaning the restrooms at his dad's business and something like that. Well, I tend to think that things are going a little, just a smidge better than that right now. Yeah, just a little. And uh, that guy with that comment, I don't know that we've heard from him this week. He's probably disappeared. Yes, exactly. And the broom, that was cool. So Dominic Selzy, man, what a, uh, and what they've got going on with him and Jimmy Carr out there. Ooh, yeah. boy. And it's going to be fun. To see what happens in September, yes, when they roll back in there, because I'm telling you, as much as he won that King of the West Narc Series 410 race, Bud Kading was every bit mm-hmm. as good. And 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 Bud, when when the big boys or the little guys roll into town, Bud doesn't isn't even bothered doesn't by him. Doesn't nope. face him. So California is Getting looking stronger. good. Well, it is, and, and there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of talent that's left. But I think what we've learned in talking with Peter last week, Peter Murphy and and Dominic over the time and Bud, is that it is so rich with talent that all of the talent hasn't left. Some of the talent has left, yeah. but there's still a bunch of it there. And you have the Kading and the Selzy and the Roth and the Tarleton, so you have a good foundation yep. of old-time, it's funny, Selzy, old-time California Sprint Car, but the, but that yeah. legacy, that tradition, solid, uh, solid, and Dominic's not going anywhere. So um, cool, man. California, California, great stuff. All stars, two first time winners. Tyler Courtney Sunshine picked up the win at I ninety six on Friday, and uh, the Dirt Oval at Route sixty six. Kyle Reinhardt, Kyle Reinhardt, going to join us. One of your engineering types. Yes, he is a fascinating story. Look forward to talking to Kyle. Other winners. I watched this one or watched the end of it. Jackson, the Bull Haulers mm-hmm. brawl on Friday night. Brownie picked up the win. Brian Brown. Cusets was Justin Henderson cowboyed up. They went off into turn number one. They throw the green flag. Went off in turn number one. The leader was uh, Skyler Prohaska. Gets off turn number two. Gets a little sideways. Just starts tumbling. Oof. It's we can do that Houston's, there. man. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I can't wait. We're going there for the Houston's 50. Ha, ha, ha. Are you kidding me? That one is circled in red ink on the calendar. Um, ASCS was at Bulls Get. Blake Hahn. Watch a little bit of this. Man, watching those guys get around that because that, that is high track. bank. Yes. Oh, man, that is high bank. They even talked about seeing the visibility yeah. of the sight lines. I raced there yeah. years Did ago. You really? Yeah. 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 When I remember we first got there, I don't know if it's still the same, but at the time, the water truck wouldn't even go on the banking. He right. would go around the infield and spray, spray up. up on the banking. Yeah. They did that. They showed yeah. a video of that. Brian Holbert showed a video of that. So Blake Hahn um, seems to be getting his footing pretty good there with ASCS National Tour. And yes, in the shocking department, at Atomic, it was Cole Duncan getting a win. His 52nd win. Yeah, this year. <laughs> um, so, great stuff. Man, we are at a great time in the sprint car world. It really, truly is. And uh, so, um, yeah, Kyle Reinhardt and um, uh, Aaron Wrights are going to join us here today on the program. You know, uh, I'm so excited about it because um, I'm going out tomorrow night to Millbridge again. Oh, yeah? Tonight they run the kids. Yep. And tomorrow night is the micros and some of the box stock classes and stuff like that. What I love about it is is that you go out there and you see HRP stuff. Our friends at HRP, they love karting. From sprint to road racing to winged outlaw karts, HRP Streeter Super Stands are the number one selling brand for karting. Automatic, electric lift, rolling stands, stackers to carry multiple carts and more. And just like sprint cars, HRP has the racks, tire racks, engine racks, speed breakers, and a whole line of kart racing accessories. HRPRacing.com. That's www.HRPRacing.com. 
Well, let's talk a little bit or show you a little bit or take a listen if you're if you're listening to the podcast here on what it sounded like Saturday night at Tulare Thunder Bowl Raceway. It was the seventh annual Peter Murphy Classic. Talked about Bud Kading equally as good as Dominic Zelzi. Take a listen to this. It's our buddy Bobby Gerald with the call on Flow Racing. And now for the Dry Dean Death Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on track moves. Bud Kading and Dominic Selzy putting on a good show here in the Peter Murphy Classic. Once again, it's Selzy to the inside. Once again, he takes the lead from Bud Kading. Kading cuts it back down the back straight away. They drag race into three. Kading's got it, but here comes Dominic one more time to the inside. Good stuff up front. Dominic Selzy's going to lead lap number 24. That death defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Death the official death of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Over the years, Drydean has stood for uncompromised value and proven performance. Known as the hardest working brand in heavy duty lubrication, Drydean's heritage is made in America and made to last. Drydean products work to increase the life and enhance the efficiency of your equipment in the toughest conditions. Learn more about Drydean's products at Drydean.com. From grassroots racing to NASCAR, Drydean is a proud supporter of racing everywhere. Circle B Diecast is the new diecast outlet from Plan B Sales. What started as Lionel and Chase Authentics Apparel Distributor has grown into the largest distributor of diecast and now includes Auto World Greenlight Collectibles, Brand Art, Sam Bass Artwork, and University of Racing Lines. They have a huge inventory. The folks at Circle B Diecast love racing and support drivers like Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Christopher Bell, and many others with sponsorships and partnerships. And on orders over $20, use promo code MRN for free shipping. Check them out, CircleBDiecast.com. The story of Kyle Reinhardt has been a fascinating story to watch over the course of time. If you follow along with it, you know it. But if you're if you're new to the program here or new to sprint car racing or new to this story, Kyle is a New Jersey sprint car racer. We always talk about the David Gravel from Connecticut, the hotbed of sprint car racing. Uh, well, New Jersey as well. Uh, Kyle was an engineer in New Jersey who decided to hang up the engineering gloves and goggles and pick <laughs> up racing goggles and uh, pursue a career in sprint car racing. And I would say it's going very, very well, especially after that big career first flow racing all-star win on Saturday night at Route 66 at the Dirt Oval at Route 66. And he joins us now on the Dry Dean Hotline. Hello, Kyle. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Well, Kyle, that whole uh, progression from engineer to sprint car racer, it's probably looking a little bit better every day now, the way you're progressing uh, as, as you go along here. Yeah, it's been a it's been a long road to hoe, but uh, we're getting there L little by little. You know, just uh, making small small victories and and just getting there little by little. Small victories. You had a pretty big one this weekend. What was that like to get in victory lane with the All Stars? Oh, it was huge. You know, um, I know we talked a couple of, about two years ago when I got my first four ten win, and then uh, you know just just keep checking the checking the things off the list. You know, getting. Getting on the road with the All Stars was a uh, you know a big step for me in my career and and uh, you know trying to make a living at this so to uh, you know to get on the road first of all but to be a winner with the guy with the All Stars is a is a huge step. Looked like um, that race you had uh, and and that's the thing you had Sunshine who won the night before you had uh, you had um, just all of them up there working on you. Uh, tell us a little bit about the race, how it evolved, uh, some traffic, how you how, how you managed that race up at the uh, Route 66 Dirt Oval. Yeah, well, first of all, it was an awesome place, great facility. Um, the track was really neat. I'm glad they stuck it out and, and had us race, you know, because it rained all day. Um, mm -hmm. So they, they put it through, and, and we got the race. Um, we started off the night great. We were just fast right out of the box. Um, we have been struggling the last month or so with just getting our engines running and, and had, fighting a couple issues. So, um, you know, to, to get out there and just be fast right away was, was a relief. Um, and then we put a good lap down in time trial. Um, so it made the dash, you know, and, and we kind of were able to conserve a little bit in the heat race because, uh, you know, we're locked in the dash. So um, got a good pill draw. So a little bit of lady luck helped. And then, uh, you know, we kind of just commanded the race. I mean, you know, we, we got passed by Elias in the dash and then uh, got back by him and, uh, you know, started in the pole and, and 
we were so good out front and clean air. Um, you know, I think we really had the car to beat. Um, and then the lap traffic was got pretty thick, pretty fast. Um, so I know I, I lost some speed in, in lap traffic there. And, and I think, uh, you know, I, I didn't know at the time who was coming, who wasn't coming, you know, behind me, but, um, so I was just trying to make, make every move I could as fast as I could. Um, I know we got hung up a little bit, but, uh, I think I always had a, a pretty good gap between me and, and Tyler. Um, so that, that last yellow game was four to go. And then, uh, that was kind of my, my sign that we were going to get it done. Kyle, how would you describe your first year with the All-Stars? You know, we watched you race in Pennsylvania, but running with the All-Stars is a, I, I'm not going to say it's another step up, but it's different. There's a serious competition. There's more races, different tracks. What has it been like? I know you mentioned you struggled a little bit with your motors or whatever, but just the competition level and the difference. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so tough out here. We we have so many good guys, you know. It, it just goes to show, like, you know, we, we, we struggle a little bit, and, and you, a little bit's a lot. You fall off so much so fast when you're just – when you have a little bit of a hiccup in the beginning of the night, you get put so far behind because everybody's just so good. Um, you know, that, I mean, we, we missed three races already. We didn't qualify for three races just because everybody's on kill all the time. So, um, you know, if your stuff isn't isn't on 110%, you're, you're going to struggle. So I think that, that just shows the level of competition there is. Boy, it is. It is really difficult, that's for sure. I One of the things I love about sprint car racing is there's no one method to get to the promised land. You know, some guys will, I, I always use the Brian Brown and Greg Wilson model where own your own deal, um, you know, control your destiny, get a partner to, to take you to the dance and do all of that. And there's the guys that just came up, show up with a helmet bag and, and, and get rides. You have worked really hard, Kyle, on the racetrack, but I know you have worked really hard off the racetrack, developing some partnerships with people that have allowed you to do that. Kind of describe what that process has been like, who's been so instrumental in getting you there and, and, and rewarding them with, with, with a win on Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been a, it's been a ride for sure. Um, you know, like you said, everyone's got their own method. Um, I kind of took the, the only road that was available to me. You know, we, we, my family has, has worked hard for forever to let myself and my brother race when we were younger. Um, you know, we got the, we got the 600 micro sprints and my dad, you know, I was like 12 and, uh, he's a little older than that. My dad looked at me and said, this is it. And I was like, all right, that's no problem. You know, I was a little kid. I thought I was going to be a NASCAR driver. So, um, uh, you know, he said, that's as far as we go. This is all we got. So, um, you know, I got, I got really lucky and, and Scott, Scott and Joseph McLaren out of uh freehold in New Jersey gave me my first sprint car ride in a 305. Um, so that really got me going. And then just over the couple of years, we've, we've, uh, you know, been racing anything I could for anybody. And, and then luckily I got linked up with, uh, Wayne Quackenbush and his family. Um, and, uh, and the Capital Renegade team, uh, in 2016, I believe, 17. And, uh, you know, that really started off as a, as like a seven race deal. You know, we were going to just kind of help each other out. I was going to help them with their 360 program and, and, uh, and they were going to let me race 410 a little bit. Cause that was all I had to, to race. Uh, so it started off as just a seven race deal and now we're running the all-stars. So, um, huge thanks to them. You know, they've stuck behind me. For, for many years now, and it's, it's been a lot of ups and downs, um, you know, and, and not a huge, we weren't a huge team, you know, we, we had two cars and two motors, and, and we did with, with, you know, what we could with them, and then, um, you know, luckily, moving forward, we were always kind of looking for that, for that person or, or team or partner or whatever you want to call it to kind of take us to the next step, we couldn't do it on our own, um, so we got linked up with Jeff McCall, and um, over the winter, and uh, you know, we kind of we kind of had it in our mind that we wanted to you know go all the way and 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 run the All Stars. So uh, and Jeff was in the same situation. He he wanted to do it too. So it kind of just all our goals kind of lined up. And and uh, so without Jeff McCall and 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 Wayne Quackenbush, I I wouldn't be racing. So I can't thank them enough. 
how does this work with Jeff? Because he's from down here in South Carolina. Of course, he was partnered with a driver from, from the Churival. state of Washington. Churival. Churival. He's from Churival. That's yeah. right. That's how you say it down here. <laughs> he taught me that a long That's time right. ago. That's right. Yeah. Churival. Yeah. Churival. Yeah. Um, but he was with, uh, he was, you know, he was, he was uh, with, what's his Loss, name? Uh, uh, Lance Moss for a while, Lance way Moss. back. Yeah, but last year right. was with uh, Trey Starks. Trey, Trey, Trey Starks. Yep. How did this work, and, and, and how does that work with him being South Carolina-based? Well, I think, uh, you know, they were kind of having some things shuffle up a little bit, and, and you know, Trey's got a great business going, and, sure. and he had some uh, some things to focus on that. So they were kind of in limbo, and then, and then uh, we kind of just started chatting about it, and, and uh, you know, that's how it kind of all snowballed. It snowballed pretty fast, you know, from a – first conversation to, to yeah let's do it you know so um well jeff jeff's you know based out of north carolina uh so at the beginning of the year myself and uh my crew chief bob curtis we drove down to to Turville and uh <laughs> and uh actually lived out of the shop for a little over a month to get ready to go to go to georgia uh for the first race so we kind of just put everything together down there and uh you know we got our truck and trailer ready to go from Capital Renegade before we before we left. Um, prepped that and then and then drove down there, built all the cars, got everything ready, went racing, and then on our way back we stopped in Cherville again and picked up some more parts and stuff, and then took it all back to PA to our shop in Pennsylvania in uh, in New Oxford. Wow. So you, now you're based out of Pennsylvania. Do you get back off? And I know your schedule right now kind of allows for some time, but this weekend you're headed to Indiana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we haven't had many long weeks yet. You know, it's been kind of just weekend races, uh, which has been nice for us to kind of to get rolling, you know what I mean, and just kind of give us a little buffer to, to get things going and, and not just be on full kill, full tilt the whole time. Um, this is the first week that we're, we're staying out. We're actually in Brownsburg right now. Um, we left Joliet Saturday night and drove back to uh, Tad Basil's house. We're staying at his shop. This week, so we're uh, running around a little bit in Indy right now, picking up parts and tires and stuff, and then uh, we'll race in Indy at Purple City on Thursday, and then uh, race through Sunday, then head back home, because then uh, next weekend we have a PA swing, so that's good for us being at home. Right. Can't wait to catch up with you next week at the Weikert Memorial at Port Royal. So, Kyle, I'm telling you, it's been fun to watch. I know we get a chance to chat with you when we go to the racetracks or at the Chili Bowl. His seats are in the same row. Oh, chili bowl. Yeah. We always see. We always yeah, I'm see usually the, uh, I'm usually shuffling by with a couple beers. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, his making sure he doesn't his two beers don't don't fall into my two beers as he shuffles by. Uh, we have a mutual friend, Ryan Flores, who grabbed me. Mm-hmm. Ryan is a uh, tire changer for um, Penske Racing, and he grabbed me on Sunday morning. And he says, "How about our 600 micro guy? How about our How about our indoor guy, Kyle Reinhardt? Because that's where I spent some time seeing you as well." So. Love your story, and, and, and was so happy to see you get that win on Saturday night. So congratulations, and thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation today. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate all the, the good words, and uh, I appreciate you guys having me on. There we go. Kyle Reinhardt. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, that was funny. Flores and, and Ryan Flores is just the coolest guy on the planet. Mm-hmm. He runs the, the indoor TQs. Yep. Yeah, and man, he he comes literally just about running up to me. He says, "How about our New Jersey sprint car guy? How about that?" You know, it was cool. So uh, I, I love it. I love that passion, excitement. And when you leave a somewhat secure engineering field to chase a very insecure sprint car world, that's passion right there. Absolutely. And rewarded. I love the Jeff McCall angle of that. Jeff's just yeah. one of those really cool guys. My daughter was looking at, I know we're way off the reservation here. My daughter was looking at going to college at App State. And Jeff, I was talking to him one time down at, um, down at the place your mama warned you about, down at the Cherokee Speedway. And uh, he said, hey, I've got a buddy that has some apartment buildings up there. Let me know if she ends up going up there. Oh, and I'll see if we can you know, make, yeah. the, make the connection and get you a deal up there. So that's the kind of guy he is. Yes. Just a great guy. So she ended up going to Charlotte. So it's an end. Didn't, didn't pan out, but I love that with uh, Wayne Quackenbush. Wayne Quackenbush invests a lot in this sport, mm-hmm. Capital Renegades, and uh, has just built this thing up with uh, with Kyle and then the addition of Jeff McCall. Boy, they yeah. are building something Jeff's, really Jeff's nice. Jeff's a smart guy. Jeff's too, yeah. a real smart guy, man. I'll tell you what, he's awesome. So I love it. Love getting a chance to catch up with a race winner like Kyle Reinhardt. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. 
Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Aggressive Hydraulics provides solutions for virtually every industry that uses hydraulic cylinders. For instance, agriculture, construction, defense, emergency services, energy, food processing, forestry, marine, mining, railway, and even truck equipment. They design and manufacture mobile-style single-stage cylinders as well as multi-stage telescopic cylinders. It's a no-one-size-fits-all approach with Aggressive Hydraulics. Check out their story at AggressiveHydraulics.com. Sunoco is a proud partner of Wing Nation. Not all fuels are created equal, so fill up with Sunoco Ultratech. Sunoco Ultratech is a top-tier detergent gasoline that is proven to make your engine run cleaner, longer, and more efficiently. Using the same detergent package as what is blended into some of Sunoco's high-performance race fuels, you can trust Ultratech for your everyday race. Whether you're headed to the track or just hitting the road, fill up with Sunoco Ultratech and fuel your best. Wing Nation rolling along here, presented by Hercules Tires, and uh, we're just having a ball. And uh, I am fairly certain our next guest on the Dry Dean Hotline was having a ball Saturday night. I don't know if it was more fun in Victory Lane or more fun on lap number one of that heat race. Holy God. <laughs> Aaron Reitzel joins us on the Dry Dean Hotline. Hello, Aaron. Welcome into Wing Nation. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me back. Aaron, I don't care what anyone says. When you roll into Williams Grove as an all-star, it's got to be fun to win. It has to be a whole bunch of fun to win rolling in there with the World of Outlaws. Congratulations. Tell us about that uh, Tell us about that victory on Saturday night. It was awesome. It was um, It was just one of those deals. It was kind of – it's crazy how a night works out. You know, you don't get qualified in good, but, you know, the scenario in the heat race worked out perfect from, you know, where I was starting and how good of a run I could get. and. You know, you draw the one in the dash and makes your night just a little bit easier. And then you're able to try some different stuff because you're in the dash. And, uh, you know, we 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 learned what the car didn't want in the dash. And then in the A, I felt like we hit it perfect and just kind of got out front. And, you know, no yellows, was able to set my own pace, got through a bunch of lap cars good, and uh, caught the rubber when it started coming in. So it was one of the, a perfect night. Aaron, it's interesting. You know, most drivers talk about how they'd rather be in second at some points in the race so you can see which lines to run. But I, I loved your quote about how you saw the lappers were starting to pull away from you, and then you knew at that point you need to get to the bottom and catch that rubber. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, you, you had an idea that it was probably going to come in. You, you know, you never really know for sure. Um, so that's why I, I didn't want to see any yellows because I felt like I was getting through lap traffic fine. I, I really ne never had anyone hold me up too long. And uh, then I got to, you know, one car. I felt like I ran him down fairly quick. And, you know, then it, I kind of stalled out behind him. And then it got to the point where he started driving away from me. So, you know, I moved down. And you know, sure enough, it was getting good down there. And I think actually when I moved down, it wasn't quite there yet because it took me a little bit to get going. And I started hearing Geo out there. but I figured, you know, as long as I could get comfortable down there, I couldn't, I, like I said, I couldn't get by that one lap car, so I figured I was going to be okay. Aaron, I want to talk about that heat race, okay? <laughs> and I'm watching on Dirt Vision, and the first start of it, you went from fourth to second, and the caution came out. And I think Johnny Gibson on Dirt Vision said, oh, man, that Aaron Reitzel, that's not what he's looking for. And it was kind of like you're saying, well, hold my beer, watch this. Uh, that restart, that heat race, is, is that kind of what you have to do when you're when you're starting with as tough as Williams Grove is and as tough as that field? Do you do you have to just kind of, for lack of a better term, lame on the dash and, and and make it happen like that? I mean, with the Outlaws, it seems like every start and restart you have to give it a hundred percent because after about the first lap, when you know we start getting spread out, unless you're much better, it's it's that tough to pass in Williams Grove. It's, even that much harder to pass. So, um, you know, the first start, it worked out good. My, my, my hope was exactly what happened, where the 11 would get a good start and do the smart thing and kind of shut the door on the start, and I could have an open lane. Well, and then the next one, I figured there's no way he was going to do that again. So, luckily, we got, a, we got a good enough start again to where I actually cleared the two car and then could go into turn one and two and slide the 11. So, you know, a little bit of luck, but uh, right place, right time as well. 
You talk about the intensity of the starts and the restarts with the World of Outlaws. Talk about just the difference this year in running full-time with them and, and how it has, it's been different from past years with the All-Stars or ASCS, just the level that you're at now. I guess one of the, one of the biggest things is, you know, I knew, I knew what, what it was going to be going into it is the qualifying where, you know, you could go to an All-Star show and qualify great a lot, but then there's a time you could go in there and qualify 10th, 11th, but it puts you on the pole your heat race. So, you know, your, your night's still not over. You could make something happen where, you know, you come to an outlaw show and you qualify uh, 12th or so, and you're, you know, you're, you're uh, definitely setting yourself up for a long night at that point. You're basically penalizing yourself not being on the front row of the heat race. It's, it's just that tough. There's that many good guys. And then um, every lap, you know, it, it seems like, Every lap is just you have to run so consistent, so many good laps where it's almost it's harder. I feel like it's harder to search around and try to find things to work because you got a guy behind you. You can guarantee there's a guy behind you at all times that's running his best laps, and so you can't you can't waste too much time. And it's it's a totally different strategy of like a chess match racing with the outlaws. Hmm. Hmm. That's fascinating. I hadn't thought about that from the chess mass, but there's some pretty good chess players over there, yourself included, though. You do you do well with it. I, I kind of want to follow up on this, um, Aaron. Just the overall intensity um, of of the world of outlaws. Now you talk about it with 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 the racing, but the preparation, but the details, but the but the the the, the Monday through Thursday sort of end of it. What what is that like? It is it is that something where everything has to be taken to the nth degree as well? I mean, you know, you still you still go about it car wise and everything. You still go about all that the same. Uh, you know, personally, I I think one of the hardest parts is being out here where you it's harder to get out of a slump. I feel like to where you know. At, you got 15 guys out here that are the best at what they do. And, you know, most of them are on their A game. So you kind of start getting in a slump and, you know, get off on your cars a little bit. It seems like it's a lot harder to get out of the slump just because you're out here night in and night out to where you, you see guys come in, have a good night, and then, you know, that, that don't come run with the outlaws again for a month. It's, it's just easier to come back and, you know, be good again. I, it seems like it seems like you if you get out here and get in a slump, you just kind of get beat up, and hmm. uh, it's just harder to get momentum back going. Hmm. Aaron, with all that said, you, you know you're racing with Roth Motorsports this year, which is best equipment you can have out there. But it's been notorious for for honestly swapping drivers and changing them out a lot. It, does that? Add, I mean, that's got to be an extra pressure that maybe you haven't necessarily felt so much in the past. Uh, maybe a little bit, but you know, I, I think we're we're under we're in a good understanding with them, and you know, so far everything everything's been really good. Even you know, even when we were we had that two or three weeks that weren't very good, uh, you know, everything was pretty positive, and um, you know, they they do see the speed we do have and the mm -hmm. potential we have. But, um, we just you know, like we we've, we've been saying, we just got to get a little bit better of a consistent package and I think we'll be fine and we're, we're hitting on that we've been getting I feel like a lot more consistent night in and night out unloading with the same race car you know things things are just a little bit different this year whatever whatever it may be tires our engine package I mean whatever it is it's just it's taken us a little bit to stay consistent but I feel like we're we're getting there pretty uh pretty quickly yeah, no doubt. Um, the Pennsylvania Posse fans, they were waiting for you. And I love, I love that there's a victory lane photo. They were waiting with you with the bike hanging over the fence and all of that stuff. That's got to be kind of interesting to go in there. And, and you probably don't pay attention to a lot of it because I know you're focused on the race car. But in hindsight to see it, and it's just cool to get your picture with the fans. They gave you the raspberries a little bit, but uh, it's got to be really neat to stand in victory lane and, 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 and establish yourself there as well with that. And, and getting the picture with the bike, that, 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 that's kind of funny, actually. Yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't pay attention to any of it. I don't have social media no more. Yeah. Um, when I show up to the races, I'm there to do one thing, and that's win, 
make money and provide for my family. That's all I'm there for. And uh, that's what we showed up and did. You're a wise man not yeah. having social media. You're the smartest one of the three of us. I can tell you that because it drives us nuts. And and that's the one thing I, I love and I respect about you is that you, you're, you're, you're just a hardcore racer. Speaking of racing, tonight, Bridgeport. What's your expectations going to a track that the Outlaws have been to, but really a new track? How do you prepare, and, and, and what's your thoughts going into tonight? Uh, I watched a few videos of it. You know, we watched the race uh, they had there earlier this year when Kerry won, and it looks like a pretty fun place. Every Everyone I've talked to has nothing but good things to say about it. So uh, the, the stuff I've seen on it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It looks like an elbows-up racetrack. So uh, really looking forward to it. Elbows up racetrack. You're Aaron Wright, so you got to be looking forward, Aaron. We appreciate the time. Congratulations on that win. Uh, we know we'll be talking with you throughout the season, but uh, congratulations on the success, and we wish you more of it as you keep moving forward. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for having me on. There we go. Aaron Reitzel joining us here on the program. We have some people who embrace and play around and live on social media, and we have others who totally ignore it. And and like I said, I, I honestly at times, there are times when Aaron's head and shoulders better than us for not. Uh, for sure. I mean, I mean, it's, we all have a love-hate relationship with yes, social media. Yes, we do. Media. He has no, he doesn't have the love-hate yeah, relationship. he has the hate, which is, he's probably better off. Like he is better said. off. He is better off. Man, I'll tell you, the, the thing of it is, is he is so intense of a race car. And we noticed that. We've been talking to Aaron since he was an ASCS champ. Yeah. And and you talk to, you talk, and, and see, we we all want everybody to be happy and friendly and funny. But I go there to win race, make money, and provide for my family. Yeah. Is there really, anything else to me is kind of like the periphery. I mean, I understand you got to, you, you know, there's there's certain things you can and can't do. But to me, it's like, isn't that really the basics of what it is? And, you know, we talk about the old school racers. There were old school guys that were only racing for the money. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. And can you imagine someone like back in their era, like Steve Kinzer on social media? Like, I can't That's really a, picture it. You, you know, think like, about that. You're right. Steve Kinzer, but you think Doug Wolfgang. There's some people Doug that Wolfgang. don't need all that. Doug Wolfgang yeah. on social media or Steve Kinzer on social <laughs> media. It's almost like Reitzel's a throwback to that because yeah. he doesn't need it all. And guess what Doug Wolfgang and Steve Kinzer did? They went out, they won races, races, they provided for their families. Yeah. That's a really good, interesting dynamic. You're right about that. Reitzel certainly does that for sure. Picking up that big win, and he'll have more wins. Boy, I'm telling you what, that cat can flat wheel a race car. Over 200 events from coast to coast, and they're celebrating 30 years of scattering soil. The American Sprint Car Series, the world's largest sprint car sanctioning body, is bringing more thrills with wing and even more non-wing action in 2021. 11 regional tours, the national tour. No matter where you are, we're coming to a track near you. Can't be there? Get dull with streaming fun with Racing Boys and FullRacing.com, bringing all the adrenaline to your favorite streaming device. See the full lineup of this now at ASCSRacing.com. Sage Fruit is a premium grower, packer, and shipper of Washington tree fruit. Apples, pears, and cherries, and it's always an exceptional eating experience, and they're grown in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. High-quality fruit, exceptional flavor, healthy snacking, and they're a longtime supporter of Sprint Cars, Sprint Car Racing, and Wing Nation. Make sure when you go to your local grocery store, ask for Sage Fruit. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum, located at one Sprint Car Place, on the famed Marion County Fairgrounds in Knoxville, Iowa, a place that both Aaron and I will get to not once but twice mm -hmm. this year. So excited about that. We always talk about the birthday calendar. Russ Garnett, uh, birthday uh, Monday. Pat Sullivan, Paul Weirich, Bob Swiker, Gus Schrader, Joe James, all coming up. Uh, Clarence Hooker Hood today. Uh, would have had a birthday. Shirley Keir Valentine and W.H. Bill Vandewater. Um, I, I'm really torn. I love the Memphis hooker hood stories. Yes. I really do. And that is a neat part of the area. But they just don't come any finer than Shirley Keir no. Valentine. Period. We could do we could do the whole bio thing, but all you need to say is they just don't come finer yes. than Shirley, and you've told her whole story. Keir Speed Shop, of course, up in Tifton, Ohio notorious one of those old school classic speed shops that every racer loves 
And they just keep knocking it out. I had known uh, of Shirley, of course, Kendra co-hosted the mm-hmm. show. So obviously being Ohio based, I mean, I knew Kier's speed, shop, uh, Kier's speed shop and everything. What really struck me is when they announced the Hall of Fame inductees the year she was inducted. It was three or four years yeah. ago. When they announced it, I walked into my next racetrack. It might have been Volusia. I walk up. Very first person I go to is Danny Smith. He looks up and he says, man, isn't it cool Sherry Kears is in the Hall of Fame? I thought, yeah, that's, it's really, really cool. He says, man, I'll tell you what, I don't know how many times she's helped me with my career mm-hmm. and how many times she's kept me going down the road. And, you know, then we catch back up and we do this and we do that. And I walked down the way and someone else says, literally, like, like within the first five conversations that I had with people, three of them, not, hi, how are you? It's, isn't it cool Shirley Kears is in the Hall of Fame? That's a legacy yes. right there. And that's not a legacy as a driver, not a legacy as a promoter. Like, like, that's a speed shop operator, but speed well, shop operators are so critical. Yeah, and she wasn't just a speed shop operator. She was, as she, she said, help people keep, stay down the road. But she was like a mom figure to a lot of us. Yeah, yeah. She, she was always there, smiling, supportive, wanted to see you do well. But if you didn't do well, she still, like, she, she just was someone that always had a smile on her face and was always happy to see you. Always happy to see. I, I know when I yeah. run into her, or the family, I see them anywhere. Yeah. You know, they're always. Yeah, I won't see her for a long time, and it's a big hug. It's a reunion. Yeah, it's, it's a reunion. Yeah. And it's like you, and, and 30 seconds later, you've never lost that gap of time. No. It just continues on. Yeah, she's a special she person. She is a special, special person, and her legacy is enshrined right off from turn number two in Knoxville at the Sprint Car Hall of Fame. You can become a supporting member of the Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. And Aaron, you're not going to break the bank doing it. It's only $25. Yep, and you get free admission to the museum and 10% discount on the museum store merchandise, which I know you like, Woo! all of us like. Spring, it's www.sprintcarhof.com. Oh, man, I'm so pumped up. I'm so pumped up because it's Tuesday night and we've got Sprint Car Racing tonight. Oh, yeah. Yes, we do. World of Outlaw, NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars at Bridgeport. What a neat racetrack, man. They've done some amazing work there. Doug Rose is the guy that does it, and he has taken that big, old, flat, five-eighths mile racetrack and turned it into a high bank, yes. racy little four tenths joint that's yeah, going that to be Yeah, that place used to be so fast, and oh. honestly, some of the races were boring. They would well, get so spread out. out. So, yeah. yeah. They're not getting strung out tonight. Yeah. They're not getting away from each other tonight. It's crazy. So that'll be on Dirt Vision tonight. Hey, want to mention this also. Coming up next weekend, we talked a little bit about that right at the end with uh, with Kyle Reinhardt. Next weekend is the Weikert Memorial up at Port Royal. Ashley and I are going to be up there. We're going to be doing live Wing Nation shows presented by Dryden on the stage. Uh, that's Saturday and Sunday, the 29th and 30th. And the cool part about this is we've partnered with Flow Racing. And so these live shows, they're going to be streamed live on Flow Racing and Wing Nation's Facebook page, Facebook Live. So you can catch all of that. Then Ashley and I are going to do some other Facebook Live stuff. We'll be on social media and everything. But it's a Weikert Memorial, the uh, Flow Racing All-Star Circuit of Champions, the Pennsylvania Posse. 10000 to win on Saturday night, $29,000 to win on Sunday night. And be a big, big one. Bulls head trophy that they have. Yeah, it's really all about the trophy. It's all about the trophy. No and on Sunday morning, it'll all be about the donuts because Ashley and I go around the campgrounds on a golf cart giving away donuts. <laughs> oh, ha, ha. One for me, one for you. <laughs> Two for me, one for you. The whole dietary thing and everything like that, that's going to be it. That's good. Yeah, that's going to be one of those days that we'll just X off the calendar. So, um, yeah, so we're excited to be partnering up with Flow Racing on that. Let's see what's coming up here on Wing Nation. Blake Anderson joins us on our Thursday podcast. And uh, coming up on our television show this weekend, Dominic Selzy on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Check out Aaron's shirt. There we go. Wing Nation gear is available at www.wingnation.com. If you're in Indy this week, where the All-Stars are selling the merchandise, and we'll have all of our stuff next week at Port Royal as well. Wingnation.com for all of these shows and Wing Nation 10th anniversary merchandise. Thank you to Kyle Reinhardt and to Aaron Wright. So more important than all of that, though, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation, presented Hercules Tires.